Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Terrell, Hall of Fame, D Line, TBKC, and all that other good, beautiful, wonderful shit. Uh, check it out. This one here is um, a question. And the, uh, the question was, uh, before any of y'all get to going on, I'm going to explain it very well. So I know some of us are like, oh, what are you talking about? Um, could you breed an XL pit bull to an XL American bully? And uh, I think it's a good question because there's a lot of confusion about this. Um, I will clear this up right off top. There's, no, there's really no such thing as an XL pit bull. Uh, Pitbull community does not accept that at all. The American bully community has never made an XL Pitbull. So those who do call the, their dogs XL Pitbulls are sort of just doing their own thing. Uh, the XL Pitbull is actually an uh, XL American bully. What happens is inside the American bully community, you have some XL uh, breeders for one reason or another that say they have pit bulls instead of uh, bullies. And you also have some that prefer a certain look that's more terrier, more, um, you know, a little bit more shredded, uh, not quite as bully or not quite as mastiff as we see uh, some of the XL bullies. And um, with that being said, we are at an infant we are at an infantile stage in the american bully period and so therefore yes you can breed those dogs as you know um there they will be ukc paperwork and uh probably also um, uh abkc and some of the other bully registries but at this point in time you can breed them together um the way that the american bully is set up currently is uh most things are predicated on height uh, when you talk about everybody except for the classic, which the classic uh, and generally has the same height as the standard, that's a whole another topic for another day. But um, you also need to be th you also need to think about this because as the breed uh, continues to uh, perfect itself, and uh, we go forward, we're perfecting towards the standard. So if you are deciding to breed a more terrier style dog to a bullier dog or whatever, you have to understand that the characteristics that you want out of the more terrier style of dog could uh, potentially come back to, uh, you know, have some adverse effects on your American bully because the head structure is something that you would um, possibly lose out on in the ring. Uh, the lack of mass at times would be something that you would lose out on in the ring. And, uh, you know, I understand that a lot of those dogs have great, great conformation, great drive, uh, tight skin. And these are some of the features that you would want to go with the more terrier style, quote unquote, XL uh, pit bull. But at the same time, it's just like the, uh, the other end of the spectrum where people have more Mastiff style dogs and some that they want to call double XLs and different things of that nature is. We have to fit the standard right where it is. We can't go all around the board and we can't make up what we want to do. We have to fit the standard. And, you know, and the standard says that this dog is not massive. This dog is not pit bull. You know, uh, pit bull on steroids maybe, but <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a bully. You know, uh, not a lot of wrinkles, big head, you know, very nice structure, uh, very good muscle, but not fat. All of these things come into play. So it's always, just like with all the other breeds, it's a balancing act and it's coming in to perfect where you want to, uh, where you want to be. Now, right now, if you t talk about where we expect to be at, you know, you have a moratorium period um, as far as height goes with us to where the XL is a, the XL, and when I say us to TBKC, the XL is its own breed. The uh, standard is its own breed, and so is the uh, pocket. And what I mean by the moratorium, if, if if you've never heard me speak, is what we're doing is is that yes, they're their own breed, and currently they can be bred together. Currently, what happens now is we will set a date, but it will be um, you know in the five to six year range is that that will no longer be allowed at all. And, it, and the reason if you're asking why we're giving a five year span is because we want people to get into a routine of, perfect, of perfecting what they want and getting all the genetics in the uh, in, in the breed that they want, whether it's a standard pit, uh, excuse me, a standard uh, pocket or, or an XL. 
Now, once that moratorium is over, it's the second moratorium that happens with different rules. And what that will be is, although you're only allowed to breed, uh, say, XL to XL, if they happen to produce a nice standard dog and you want to re-register that dog and move it over to the standard class, we will not uh, be totally against that. But we're telling breeders to keep in mind that once the end date comes, which would probably be where we're looking at, you know, anywhere from 10 years to a dozen years from now, is that this is where the breed really, really comes into its own at is because at this point in time, if you if you have a if you have an XL breeding and it produces standard, it's just basically like you've produced a flawed dog that can't be registered anymore at that point. That's why it's important for us to do everything that we do now is to go uh, towards what we are doing to make the breed a recognized breed. And like I've talked about many other times is every recognized breed has real rules and real standards. You know, you can't take, you know, the different pre, uh, uh, poodle breeds and breed them together. That's just totally... Uh, you can't do it. You know, it, it, it's no it's, it's no in-between rules on that. You cannot do that at all. And uh, there's several other breeds that have uh, multiple sizes in their breeds. You can't mix those breeds at all. And it's for a good reason. It's because you want to lock in a trait. You're, when you're doing the breed, you want to make one dog. Everybody should be making one dog. So no matter what the breed is, no matter what you say the breed is, you know, whether it's Rottweiler or whether it's, you know, uh, you know, Whatever, you know, poodle, you have to have the same breed, the same, you know, everybody's going towards the same goal because this is what makes the competition fair. So going back to what we were saying about the uh, XL and the pit and, 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 and the bully, like I say, the dogs are somewhat one and the same, but make sure that no matter what you're doing, the breeding attributes that you are going for and that you are pushing for, make sure that those genetics and everything that you are pushing for is going towards the breed standard and you uh, executing the breed standard as best as possible because if you're not doing that you, you know you're, you're pretty much breeding for no reason because or unless you just plan on having your own dog and not uh dealing with registries and, and such but you know it can be done right now and I, hopefully i explained it uh well enough that everybody could understand what i was getting at but uh you know always keep the ultimate vision, which is, uh, you know, the breed standard uh, 10 years from now, locking into, you know, pocket uh, standard XL, exactly what it is, and not experimenting breeding after breeding after breeding. At some point in time, you have to have direction, and that's what we're trying to get to. Uh, until next time, man, God bless all y'all. Much love. Peace.